Good morning, my viewers. Good afternoon. Good evening. Depends on where you are viewing me from. You are a bless. My subscribers, God bless you. You that take it as a point of duty to be sharing my video, God bless you. God increase you. It's another powerful topic today. It's another glorious time to share or to be in the presence of the Lord. God bless you as you watch, as you subscribe, and as you share my video. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't also forget to share my video. Your comments are all expected. Don't fail to comment and don't fail to share. As you do so, God richly bless you in Jesus' name. Today's topic is very important in our life. For some time now, we've been on common mistake in marriage, things or error or mistakes that build up hatred in marriage. Today's topic is emotional neglect. Praise the Lord. I know when I say emotional neglect, some people or some spies out there will say, what does she mean? Emotional neglect is what some some spies, some partner go through in marriage, go through in relationship without even knowing. Praise the Lord. And what is that emotional neglect? Emotional neglect is when a spouse or your partner constantly fail to notice, attend, and respond in a timely manner. Emotional neglect. Constantly fail to notice, to attend, to respond. In a timely manner. Praise the Lord. You know, fail to take the other person fully into account. Fail to notice what is happening to your spouse. You fail to respond. You fail to notice. In a timely manner. Praise the Lord. This is emotional abuse. Emotional neglect. Rather. Praise the Lord. How do we constantly fail to take the other person feeling into account? There are many signs. There are many signs, symptoms you will not faith. Some you can notice that some they don't even bother, some they don't care. And some will be good. There are some spouses, some spouses that are going through emotional neglect, emotional neglect. They don't even recognize it, they don't even know. But definitely they know something is wrong. What is wrong with my wife? What is wrong with my husband? The man, the woman might be going through some emotional neglect. I have some few signs here. And as I read them, go into them. The question belongs to you. It's not left for you to examine yourself. Is this happening to me? Is this happening to my husband? Is this happening to my wife? 
And on this sign, I am going to mention when you discover and when you notice it's happening to you, it's happening to your husband, to your wife, definitely you are going through emotional neglect. Praise the Lord. One of them say they are the center of their whole world. Praise the Lord. Always center of their whole world. Always what they want to do. They are the center of their whole world. They don't care who is with them. They don't care whether they have partner, they have spouse, they are living with somebody in the, in, in the house. They are in their own world. When you are that type of person, or when you are going through that feeling, going through that trauma in your home, in your houses, it then means you are going through emotional neglect. Praise the Lord. Then number two of it is your spouse is it the first person you, you communicate with. You don't want to tell him anything. You always want to go aside. You always want to call your mom. You always want to call your sister. You want to call your friend. You want to relate to people outside than your spouse that is staying with you in the same house. Why? Because you feel even when I tell her or him, I'm not going to get a good response. These are the signs of emotional neglect. When something happens, the first person that comes into your mind to relate with is somebody outside. Your mom, your father, your uncle, your cousin, your friend, somebody out there. But you have a spouse in the house. Who's supposed to be your closest friend? And you, if you are this type of person, or you see your spouse, this sign in the life of your spouse, he or she is going through an emotional neglect. Praise the Lord. Then the third sign of it is they shut down. They shut down the other party whenever he wants to say something or he wants to explain or he wants to discuss an important issue. There is a shutdown. Your spies want to tell you an information. Your spies want to discuss something very important to you. You shut him or her down. This is a sign of emotional neglect. Then the other, the other sign of it is they don't want to spend time with you at all. There is no time. Always busy. Always have one thing or the other to do to take him or her away from each other. You don't want to sit with a spa. You don't want to discuss with him. You don't want to talk to him. You must look for something to engage you. You must look for something to keep you busy so that you don't sit together to communicate. Instead of you to communicate with your spouse, you prefer, oh, let me wash the tally. Oh, let me have something, one thing or the other doing on your, on your mobile phone. Oh, just something that will distract you to make sure that that time you didn't give it to him or her. If you are that kind of person, definitely you are going through neglect. You are going through emotional neglect. Today we are shouting all oh, this, 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 that. Many of our spouses, we carelessly, we send our spouses outside. We send our partner outside. And we look at what is going on on social media here and here. And you people are making all sorts of comments. And some of our spies, some of our partner, they are the cause. A woman that don't have who, who to discuss with must definitely look for somebody. 
A partner that is living with somebody inside. He has somebody inside. But there is no closeness. There is no relationship. They are just there. But nothing new. No affection. What are you expecting? Definitely. One must look for affection somewhere. And we see the atrocity that is going on in our land today. Most of us, cause we are the cause. We spend, we send our spouse out there. A partner went out in the morning, going to the office, getting to the office, have chaos. Even before he, he, he or she closed from the office, there is so much chaos. So much issue. So much things to deal with. Coming to the house, nobody to relate with. Nobody to discuss with. Or maybe he's trying to relate what happened. Oh, you notice the mood of my husband, the mood of my wife is so bad. Instead of you to ask, honey, or whatever you call yourself, what is the problem? You start attacking. You start accusing. And some of us, even when we take the pain, we still want to narrate, we still want to relate, we still want to explain. The next thing, to shut it down. Oh, okay, I've heard you. The next thing, he will bring the topic that is more important to him that of, than that of his spouse or his partner. These are emotional neglects. Your spouse, your partner will sit down. He will look up and look down. What type of life am I living? If it's the one that has got fury, sadness, pain, hatred, bitterness, building up in his heart or in her heart. But if it's the one that don't have the fear of God, he will definitely, he or she will definitely look for alternative. And when this start happening, we start judging them. But meanwhile, we are the cause. We push them to it. We lay them to it. And you see somebody that is not evil up to you out there is the one your spy find comfort way but we start complaining we start judging them without taking into account how did i treat my wife how did i treat my husband what make my spouse to do what he's doing now what i transferred what i've led him or her into the state she or he is now but we don't we don't we don't we don't go into this we don't find out all this we just think, oh, all is okay. Even when we see our spies, they are going through torment, through pain, through hardship. Without saying it, you can see it through. You can see it through their dressing, through their mood, through their uh, uh, through their discussion, through everything. But just fail to respond to it. We just feel it's not my it's not my problem. But these are things that build up hatred. They build up hatred. They build up bitterness. Fed up. And before you know it, the marriage will hurt. It will, it will hit the rock. Praise the Lord. And there are so other ways to deal with this emotional, emotional neglect. There are so many other ways. There are so many ways to deal with it. There are so many ways to handle it. There are so many ways to come out of it. We have so many ways to come out of it. But the truth is that before we can deal with it, it's another, it's another thing to be sick. It's another thing to recognize what is actually wrong with me. The type of sickness I have. Taking medication without knowing what is wrong. It doesn't work. First of all, you have to recognize that this is my problem. 
I have this problem. How will I deal with it? Now you are talking. If you have not re recognized that it's, a, it's an issue, it's a problem, you can't deal with it. Because it's only when you recognize, I have this issue. I have this problem. How do I go about it? Then when you are thinking, then you will know the right source. You will know the right thing, the right treatment to take. You know the right counseling to look for. Praise the Lord. There are some of the ways I note down here to deal with emotional neglect. One of it is take positive action. Take positive action. You have to accept the situation. You have to accept the situation. Don't pretend about it. First, you have to take positive action. Positive action. Yes, it is happening. Yes, I am in this situation. I have to make a difference. I have to make something about it. I have to do something about it. I have to make my marriage, make my relationship to work. Now you are talking. Take a positive action. By doing that, recognize, yes, it is happening. So we pretend nothing is happening, but something is actually happening. But they try to beat or cover it up. Before you know it, the marriage reached the stage of divorcing. Either the man packing out of the house or the woman packing out of the house. Or even if none of the party pack out, but the house is already in pieces. Take a positive action. Recognize that this, this situation is happening. This is where I am now. And I'm going to make a difference. How will I make a difference? What will I do? How will I deal with this issue? Rather than complaining, rather than calling your mom, so we call their mom, call their sister, call everybody, call their pastor. And that is the problem we have today. Even when they go to church, they go to pastor, they tell the pastor, they will not see, tell the pastor the whole truth. We keep blaming men of God. We keep, we keep blaming people. But the truth is that some of them that need this counseling, some of them that need this help, they will not actually tell you the truth to work with. We pray, we fast, we bind, we lose. Is God that wicked that he cannot hear our prayer? No! God is not wicked. He said, my ear is not blood that I will not hear you. There must be something that is still wrong. There must be something that God is still, is still waiting. Something to be corrected. Something to be put in place. Praise the Lord. Complaining will not solve the situation. Fighting will not solve the situation. Packing out of your home is not the answer. Telling all your friends is not the answer. Because telling them you don't even know what they are going through in their own home. Praise the Lord. Take a positive action. Accept the situation. Accept that this is really happening in my home. I am going through this emotional neglect. I have to deal with it. I have to make a difference. Then you now look for a ways to make difference. Seek for counseling. 
Pray. Pray with your partner. Take it to God in prayer. Look for verses. Look for Bible verses that best deal with it. Look for topic that best deal with it. Praise the Lord. Then another point too. How to deal with this emotional neglect is sit down for a talk. Pick a good moment. You people have to talk over it. Sit your spouse down. Pick a very good time. Not when your spouse is coming from work, you know he have a hectic time in the office today. Or when your spies he could, he could not go to work, or he or she is at home. She's having some pain. And you know the situation is not very good. You say, okay, she's at home today, he's at home today. We got to talk about this. No. Pick a very good time. Not when he, he or she is hungry. When he's overtired. When, or he, when she or he, or he is already stressed up, that is not the best time to talk. Look for a very good time. Understanding of love. Praise the Lord. A very good time. Know when your spouse is on a good mood. A very good time. Not to rush over it. Time of relax. You have time for each other. Argue it. Then after argue, talk about it. Disagree to agree. At the end of it all, at the end of the talk, at the end of the discussion, all problems need to be solved and resolved. Praise the Lord. Then the third one is, you the person that is concerned, you the spy that is concerned, whether it's he, he, him or, or she, don't play the victim party. Because when you are coming up with this victim, with the victim party, oh, you, you want to play the victim. I'm the one that I'm being affected. Oh, you are the one, you, you do this to me, you do this, you do that to me. Definitely what you are going to get is defense. Honest, honestly, he's not going to tell you, oh yes, I did it. He will look for a way to defend his or herself. And this is not what you want. No. Don't let your victim, don't be the victim, the, the, the victim. Your heart to be the center or the focus of the discussion. No. Make it a general talk. How do we handle this? How do we deal with this issue? Don't play the victim. Don't focus on the victim. Don't focus, oh, I am the one that is being hurt here. I am the one that is suffering here. I am the one that has been affected here. And when you are playing this, then the other party will be playing a defense game. And when this continues, you will not get what you want. You will not get the results you want. Make it play. Make it heart-to-heart -heart talk. Sincerity talk. Don't play the victim. Praise the Lord. Then the fourth point is, spend time together. Make time for your spouse. Make time to play at home. Make time to read things together. Make time to do things together. Make time to play with your kids. Know what your partner like. Know the program he watch. The kind of discussion he like. If it's not the one you like, you can't just rebuke him. There is a level you will play with your spouse that you will be able to correct him or, or she. That whatever you said will seek into his head. Spend time together. Study each other. Praise the Lord. The other point, point five is, be patient. 
Be patient. When you start dealing with this issue, be patient. Don't just expect it to just solve one day. We've talked about it today. Then the next five minutes, you are already expecting results. Yes, results will come. Results will definitely start immediately. But you have to be patient. Handle it with patience. Your spouse is watching. What she, what she said today, did she actually mean it? Did she, did she, or oh, he, or, oh, oh, did she mean it or did he mean it? There is that time of wait. You have to be patient. A change does not just come a day. Yeah, you can take the decision to make a change today. Yes, a decision you can make it today. Yeah, today I have making a decision. I will never do this. I will never do that. Yes. But you, the other party, be patient with he or she. It's not where you make the way he or make that mistake again. Oh, you, you flame up. You bring him back. No. Or you bring her back. No. Be patient. That change will definitely come. Praise the Lord. And we know also, in all this changing, in all this dealing, in all this counseling, in all, in all this trying to make things work without the word of God, without prayer, without God, there is still a chaos. It's only the word of God with prayer that can correct you, mommy. Praise the Lord. And we have some Bible verses consigning this neglect in marriage. Praise the Lord. The first Bible verse we're going to look at is Ephesians 5, read from 23 to 29. But I will pick verse 25. It says, Husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. Then 28 verse of it say, Men should love their wives as their own body. Men should love their wives as their own body. When we follow the standard of God, when we follow the principle that God has already laid down for our marriage, trial will come, temptation will come, problem will come. But when our foundation is laid on Christ, our home is built on Christ, then he will give us the wisdom to go about it. He said, love your wives. Love your wives. Love your wives. Men, love your wives as your own body. And God instructed women, respect your husband. Help her to our husbands. Can you hurt yourself? Can you inflate pain to yourself? You always, we always do something to protect ourselves that we will not be hurt. We will not, that we will not fall, be the victim. We will not fall into trouble. We will not fall into, into one thing or the other. We try to. That is how God wants you men to protect your wife. Why? Because they are part of you. Praise the Lord. Then the other verse is Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 18. It says, Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. Let your fountain be blessed. And rejoice with the wife of your youth. You see, when we follow the word of God, when we follow God faithfully, we follow the word of God. Everything we need, they are all in the word of God. But carelessness, these are little, little things. They are minor. We ignore it. We fail to deal with it. We fail to recognize it. We think all is well, all is not well. Before you know it, even you see Christians' home breaking into pieces. 
it ought not to be so. If we follow the standard of God, if we follow the word of God, if we believe that my husband, my wife, my partner is part of me, we will not undergo all this problem that is happening today. God bless you. We're going to end it here today. If you have your comments, put it down. Put it on the comment side. But don't fail to, to share my video. God bless you as you listen. God bless you as you share my video. Remain blessed till I see you next week. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen.